Yes. One of you came. Well, yes and no. There is time in class now to do quizzes in class if you had to. Okay. Here we go, friends. Introduction to surface area. I'm going to do it sort of slow because I want to get through to you about something about surface area is it's just area, but it's area of all the sides of a 3D shape. So there's a little more work to it. Sometimes the shapes are friendly and sometimes the shapes are not very friendly. Okay, so we're going to do both. We'll do, we'll do some friendly shapes and then some not friendly shapes. Well, let's work on some naming a little bit, shall we? This first one up here, this 3D object that's made up of all these rectangles, looks like a cereal box, something like that. What's it called? Okay, can you write that in? Rectangular. Prism. Mr. Todd, I don't even know what prism means. Let me just finish the sentence, I'm going to answer your question, okay? Prism means it's got the same shape all the way through it. Can you see a, the, the, the square on the end going all the way through it? Or a rectangle on the side, the same shape all the way through. That's what a prism is. Same thing all the way through. Adam, what was your question? I don't know. Oh. What a relief. We are in room number 2076. 2076. Why does your friend have them? Accidentally, eh? Hmm. From now on, you and that friend, right? You're like, hmm, 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 hmm. How about this one? Cube. Hopefully that one you at least recognize when I do it. Now let's, let's, let's try this though. If you, if you don't know the names of the shapes, is this one the same shape all the way through, up and down? Does it have a shape that goes right through? Is it triangular? Triangular prism because the triangle goes all the way through. Now if that is a little confusing to you, think about a Toblerone bar. You ever had a Toblerone bar? Each piece you break off is a triangle. It's a triangle all the way through. That's what a prism is. If, you, if, you, if that wasn't clear, if that was never made clear, it means you can do the same shape all the way through it. This one is not like that. This one, the same shape does not go all the way through it. The bottom's a square, but the, you don't see square all the way through it. What's this thing called? Uh, square base pyramid. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to say pyramid, but he's right. It's a square base. Yeah, but good. I will put that on there too. Square based pyramid. Do you see that the square doesn't make it all the way through? It goes up to a point. That's what makes a pyramid is when it goes up to a point. Yeah? And our first job is to decide which of these each of the nets makes. We got to match them up. The first one, oh, I get what you're saying. This one's the square base pyramid, because a pyramid's made up of a square and four rectangles. If you get that, surface area is not going to be too bad for you, actually. You're just going, OK, it's a lot of different shapes i got to add up. So here, a square and four, no, yeah, square and four triangles. Who wants to do another matchup? Oh, the next matchup's easy, if you can see the, the rectangular prism because it needs to have rectangles, right? Rectangle, 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 but then a couple of squares or rectangles at the end. That's that one. I hope my lines crossing over doesn't mess you up. I hope you can follow that. How about the cube? It's supposed to be the easy one. Yeah, all squares, right? There's a friendly shape. If you've got to do surface area of a cube, Oh, you're the one. Oh, we're watching you. <laughs> there you go. Aren't you happy? He was very stressed. I wanted to see if he was sneaking something else in, in the AirPod case. And then this one's the triangular prism. But let's identify why. Can you look at this triangular prism and see triangle, triangle, rectangle, rectangle, rectangle without the net? If you can, you're going to be in great shape 
for surface area because you can look at that and see what the shapes are. If you can't, you're going to want to draw the net. I'll do both as we're doing it. I'll talk about maybe we need a net. That's what these are, nets. This would be the shape you'd fold up. You ever do this in elementary school? You get, make the shapes like this and then fold them up into shapes? Yeah, okay. In your own words, explain what surface area means. In your own words. So what is surface area then? Area of all the surfaces. I'm just going to add one word to what you said. Area of all the surfaces. Let's get a little example going, just in case that, that, those words don't help you too much. When would you care about surface area? When would you use the surface area of a shape? And I've got, I wonder which one you're going to say. Is she going to say the Christmas one? I, okay, what, what do you got? I'm not going to say no. I, I'm not going to say no because flooring is a very good answer. I don't know if you're going to floor all the sides of, of one of these shapes. Yeah? If this is like your house, I don't know if you're going to floor everything. But area is flooring. So I'm not going to say no to that. I'm not going to write it down, but I'm not going to say no to that. When would you put something on all of the sides? Wrapping paper, yeah? Surface area, I think that's a very good one for most people to picture what we're talking about here when we're doing surface area. We go, what wrapping paper am I going to need for this whole thing? Is there a more general one that people use? What's that? Building a house. Okay, once you built a house, what would you be putting on the outside of it? Often. Brick, paint, any of those things, that surface area. So I'll just put paint. And we can argue about whether a house, you do all the sides. Would you do the bottom? You know, okay, well, let's just, yes, I know about all those problems. And we'll, we'll deal with those as we go. Questions there? Good so far? On our last lesson ever? This says, for each object, draw the net. Now, listen, friends. If your homework says draw the net, and you're like, I don't need to draw the net, I can see all the shapes in my mind, then you don't have to draw the net. But I will draw the net. Here's what the net's going to look like. If this thing folded out, it would be... The four rectangles, the four long rectangles around the outside, yes? And then you need two caps at the end. Got some choices about where to put them, but something like that. Six sides, just like a cube. It's got six sides, but they're not all cubes. So if I wanted to do the surface area, now there are formulas on your sheet. Having taught surface area a lot of times, I'm tentative about the formulas. I'm tentative. I think it's easier to just do the shapes you see than the formula. That is, what would the dimensions of the first rectangle be? And I, by first, I left it open there. I didn't really say which rectangle. Tell me one of the rectangles, what it length, its length and width would be. 30 by 30 by 12. That's the front one, right? I'm going to write the little 12 there. That front face is 30 by 12. So I'm going to go, oh, 30 times 12. If you're a formula person, I, I, I encourage you, go ahead, use the formula. But it might be easier than that. The formula might make this more confusing than it has to be. It's just rectangles. Now, if you're right with me, you, you should know I might have left something out there. But OK, you, you'll correct me in just a second. Plus, what's the next rectangle? Instead of 30 by 12, what would the top and bottom be? Yeah, by 8 now. So there's 30 by 8. What about the caps at the end? What are the dimensions of those little end caps? 12 by 8, OK? So if you found surface area difficult in grade 9 and the formulas messed you up, maybe the formulas aren't the right thing. Maybe it's just like, what are we talking about here? We're talking about a bunch of rectangles. There were six rectangles. So I got, oh, 
I've only got three. Good news. It's double this. There's three of the rectangles, but then when you're all done, you've got to multiply the whole thing by two. That rectangle times two, that one times two, and that one times two. Because it's got a cap over here, but it's got another cap over there. This one's got a top, but it's also got a bottom. It's got a front, but it's also got a back. So every one of those rectangles, there's two of them. Could you go 30 by 12, plus 30 by 8, plus 12 by 8, and then do it all again? Plus another 30 by 12, yes. Plus another 30 by 8, yes. Plus another 12 by 8, yeah. You could do that. Or you could just multiply them by 2. Could you add them all up first and then multiply by 2 at the end? Yes. See? The formula makes it seem like there's some magic going on here with surface area. There's no magic. Just find all the rectangles. They're, they're just rectangles. You just got to get all of them. So, punched in my calculator, I get 720 for those two. I get 480 for those two. And I get 192 for those two. That's all calculator work. I'll check it in a minute. I'm doing it in my head here. Then you add those all up. I get 1392. How did I do, calculator people? Is it good? And you could type it in several different ways, and this is where the practice comes in to make sure you get it all correcto. Ugh, getting distracted here. JC, what's going on? What did I forget? I forgot my AirPods in my other classroom. Elephants, camels, what are we doing? Wagon wheels? Careful now. Be really careful. If you think you know the answer, be really careful. First of all, let's get the base unit. What are we talking about here? Centimeters. Centimeters. Hold on. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Is it cubed or is it squared? Are we talking about areas? Or are we talking about volumes? Well, we could set the goal on being right, even if I'm not going to take a markup. I know they're paying me to teach, so I'm going to teach the right way to do it. Then on the test, I'll make a decision about what I think. What do we like? You like squared or you like cubed? It is squared because it's a surface area. We're just adding up a bunch of areas. It's not a volume. Yeah? Good. Good thinking. Good catch. Good thinking. Well, I, I'm not saying the surface area lesson is over. I, got, I want to talk about some special cases, but that's the game in surface area. All the shapes in whatever 3D object we're talking about. So we'll just now, we'll just discuss some other shapes that come up. The rest of the, the rest of the lesson is just that. Well, let's just talk about some other shapes and what, what we get out of those, okay? Do you have questions? More time? How about this one? What shapes do you see? Oh, no, I, actually, how many shapes do you see on this thing? If I had to wrap this thing as a present, how many shapes are we talking about? There's five shapes. I totally agree with that. Let's do them individual. Just in case somebody has trouble with the multiplying by two, we'll do them individual. Surface area equals, there's a front triangle. Some people might like this. See how I put the little shape down there? Area of a little triangle. Then there's the area of the triangle at the back. So there's two different triangles. Mr. Tack, can I just multiply by two? Yes. I'm just doing this one slightly differently, just in case somebody's like, ah, oh, I have trouble managing all this. The multiplying by twos, I don't know when to multiply by twos. Don't then. Just get each individual one. Do you see the two triangles? What's the other shapes? They're all rectangles. So there's area of a rectangle. Then there's area of another rectangle. Then there's area of another rectangle. This is good writing. If you don't want to write a net, this is good writing to go, what shapes do I have to deal with here? Because hopefully that calms you down about surface area. You're like, hey, I'm just talking about triangles and rectangles. I'm going to skip the triangles for a second because I want to talk a little bit about triangles. Well, let's go after rectangles. What rectangle do you see first? Let's do the bottom. What's the dimensions of the bottom rectangle? Four and five. Four and five. 
That's the bottom, the one that's on the ground. Let's do the one that's on the back side there. Way around, in behind there. What's its dimensions? It's, it's a five along the bottom, yes? How, how, how tall is it? Three. Okay, so that's three by five. Now brace yourself, friends. And if you're angry about this, I get it. You might have to be angry about this. Let me draw, let me highlight the last rectangle so you can see it. So maybe you can see what the problem is. There's the last rectangle. How wide is it? How long is it? It's a hypotenuse. You're like, are you joking me? In the middle of this, I got a Pythagorean theorem? Maybe. So let's, let's practice that. I'm going to go after this side here. I'm going to call it C. C squared equals 3 squared plus 4 squared. Does that ring a bell? Pythagorean theorem. What's 3 squared? Jackson? They're not. They're not. Yeah, it's a good question, but they're not. They have different lengths. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see what this number comes out to be. So 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. What now? Square root, yes. And it's another 5. Not because that one was 5. That's just the way the question worked out, that that was also a 5. So this last rectangle is a 5 times 5. There's a mistake here, friends. I wrote 3 plus 5 there, and it's not. It's 3 times 5. I know. It's my life. One long mistake after another. <laughs> it is a square, but it doesn't look like it in the picture. And that happens in diagrams sometimes. We draw a diagram, we put some numbers on it just to visualize it, but maybe it, it doesn't exactly represent what the numbers are going on. Yeah. That's a good question. Even the 3 and the 4, look at, doesn't in the picture the 3 look longer than the 4? Yeah, so th that's not really what the diagrams are for. And, and I totally agree. Should we do better? Probably, but we don't often. We just draw a diagram to help picture what's going on. Okay. Ooh, does anyone remember how to do triangles? Maybe, what's the formula for area of a triangle? Half, yeah. A triangle is just half of the rectangle. So it's base times height divided by 2. So that first triangle, that front one, is 4 times 3. But that's divided by 2. And the back one is also 4 times 3 divided by 2. And if you're a multiply by 2 person, if you're like, I totally know when to multiply by 2, go ahead. I like it. But if you're like, mm, I don't know if it's worth the confusion. I'll just write each shape out. I can count them up. I can see them there. Beautiful. 4 times 3 divided by 2, you punch in your calculator, you get 6, 6, 20, 15, 25. And when you add all this up, you get 72. I don't know, I did that really fast. 72. What's the first, what's the one slash mean? Canadians? Feet. Yeah? If you're American, you'd know that all the time because they use it all the time. But we don't use that too much, so I'll write feet squared like that. Ooh, I forgot to pause. It's squared. Why is it squared? Because it's a surface area. It's an area that we're talking about here. We have to do cylinders and pyramids. And then we're done. Done. Look, I mean done. We're done, Isla. Oh, you're going to be sad. I know it. I'm going to be sad, too. We're going to see each other in the hall in February. We're going to see each other like, what happened? Yeah. Actually, you'll see me in the other wing. I think in the second semester, I teach in the other wing. One of the periods. I'm usually in 2008. Then I go over there. Isla, do you have enough time to write down these feet squares? You good? No, not good. We got cylinders, then pyramids, and we're done. Well, I'm done.
then you got all your homework you got to do, right? Yeah, you're excited. Aren't you excited? On the exam review. I've got, as promised, I photocopied it. Thank you, Adam. All right. Can I show you something really funny? And I'm sorry if you're watching the video because you won't be able to picture this, but I'll try and describe what I'm doing for video people. I've just picked up a piece of paper in my hand, and I'm just going to roll it up. Like that. What shape is it? It's a cylinder. That's all a cylinder is. It's a rolled up rectangle. That's all there is to it. If you're building a cylinder, you roll up a rectangle, and then you got to put a top and bottom on it, like, like a soup can. Then you got to go put two circles top and bottom. So the circumference, or sorry, here, do you see that this is the net? Just a rectangle and two circles. So cylinders aren't quite as complicated as some of the other ones. Pretty nice. To warm up, we better get better at circles then. Circumference of a circle. Does anyone know the formula in their head for circumference of a circle? 2 pi r. How do you remember that? You've just seen it enough times? I have a rhyme for you. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Circumference equals 2 pi r. I just made that up. Circumference equals 2 pi r. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Circumference equals 2 pi r. It's amazing. I just put that, I just made that up and put it on video. I'm going to copyright it. So what's pi? 3.14. What's r in this question? 4. Punch those into my calculator. 25.12. 25.13, she says. We'll go 25.1. Ooh, circumference. Centimeters, centimeters squared, centimeters cubed. It's the distance around. Centimeters, yeah, just centimeters. Who knows the area formula? Pi r squared. Pi r squared. Okay, you need another rhyme. Here comes another rhyme. Fuzzy, wuzzy, was a bear. Area is pi r squared. I can do this all day. Don't quit your day job. So cruel. Fuzzy, wuzzy, was a bear. Area is pi r squared. Can I do this in my head? I don't know. 48, 50.24? 50, 50 Who's on the calculator here? 50.24? It's not that weird. I've seen many of these numbers before. Centimeters. It's an area. Square. So, if we want to find the surface area of a cylinder, there's only three shapes involved. Two circles, one rectangle. How's that word? My goodness, I was going to yell at me if I don't tidy that up. Hang on just a second. So, we get two pi r squared, and this is weird, that distance is 2 pi r, and that one's h. So there's the surface area formula. So I take back what I said. For cylinders, maybe you do want the formula. Huh? For complicated shapes, maybe, maybe. I don't know. You got to decide. Well, 
Life's complicated. I don't know what to tell you. The shit. Shh. We're half done cylinders. Then we got pyramids, and that's it. Pyramids is easier than cylinders. <laughs> Cat in the hat. Do you have questions? More time? Yeah. More time, okay. I got a keyboard exam review today, too. I got two examples to do, right? And then surface area, and we're home. Still more time? Who, who said more time? We okay? Determine the amount of tin needed to make this can of soup. Your formula sheet, which you do get on Friday's test and you do get in the exam. You'll have your formula sheet. You're allowed to have it. You write down the formula, 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi rh. What's the radius here? Shh. Don't make me talk over you in our last lesson together. The amount of tin? No, tin would be the outside. Volume would be how much soup inside. Yeah? Good. Good question. We're just making the, 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 the can here. 2, 3.14, the radius is 3.5, that gets squared, then 3.14, radius is 3.5, height's 11. And those of you who did a lot of volume homework are like, oh, well, okay, maybe I like the formulas. As long as I can just plug it into the formula, it's not too bad. Punch that all in my quackulator here. 2 times 3.14 times 3.5 squared plus 2 times 3.14 3 times 3.5 times 11, 318.71. But now a very tough question. It says, how much to make just the soup label? What are they talking about? You know a soup can? Just the label? Then you don't need the whole surface area. You only need, not the circles, this part. That's why I went through the net thing and said, OK, which part is the soup label? And which part is the top and bottom? You only need this part of the formula. But I won't pretend that's easy to pick that out. You need to understand the formula to be able to pull that apart like that. Questions? Right, good catch, thank you. Still surface area, so centimeter squared. I almost forgot, that's a good catch. More time? Yes, please. Pyramids and we're done. What will we do? Your day ends in here every day, 145. It's the high point of your day. All gone soon. Oh, you've already looked at what you got next semester? I do. I do. I have a 10 academic one next semester. But I no longer have an 11 next semester. I get another grade 12. So. 
Next year, we haven't decided. We decide all that stuff in like April and May. So depends on what you guys sign up for, because you guys got to do your uh, option seats in in uh, in February. You start choosing your classes for next year, which I'm available for, even though you're not in my class. If you're wondering what you should take and what you should sign up for, just come down and see me in 2008. Even if I'm teaching, you just walk right in, carrying your option sheets. But well, you don't call it option sheets anymore. You call it your course selection sheets. Yeah? Come in carrying, like, just tell how I do. And I go, this one, I think, is the right one for you. And I'll choose, help you choose. Yeah? Who just yelled at me? That's not what we're doing. That's not what we're doing. Those are all your homework questions. We're doing... This, right? Pyramids. I say pyramids are easier. What do you see in the shapes? Yeah, four, tri four triangles and a square. Most people sort of like pyramids. They're like, okay, I can live with a pyramid. Yeah? So, what are the shapes? Four triangles. One square if it's square based. So the formula for a square is just S squared, and the triangles are base times height divided by 2. Actually, if you look at the formula page, they just write it like that, because 4 divided by 2 is 2. You don't have to, but that's what you'll see on the formula page. What's that? I know my S's look like fives. I apologize. I'll do better. It's an S. Here comes my S. More careful. Is that better, Shamar? Especially Shamar is like, hey, got to get the S's right, man. I, I, that's an S. It looks like a what? Oh. Uh, Oh. <laughs> Isla's coming up to show us how to write S's. Here you go, Isla. No pressure. Adam's going to come up and write a better S to Mr. Todd. Achieving him a bonus mark. You like his? You like his better? <laughs> she doesn't like anything. That's a good ass. Proud of you. Anyways, here it is. Final example of the year. Could be a little better. Like, that'll fit the five. Yeah. Now that's squished the bail off. Like the body squished. That'll fit. There. There's pyramids. Base and height of the triangles 50 and 30. And then the bottom's 50 squared. Can I do this in my head one last time? 4,500 plus 2,500. Who's got a calculator to make sure that Mr. Todd isn't crazy? 7,000. Who's on the calculator? Yards squared. As usual, I will do the answer pages and post them. Especially since the test on this stuff is on Friday. So we got to get you got to get some done by Friday.